We, we need y'all to come out, man. If y'all don't come out and support yourselves and learn how to advocate for yourselves, man, we will continue to be warehoused in these shelters and die on the streets of Washington, D.C. The mayor, when he proposed the budget, proposed over $70 million in cuts in low-income programs. He's continued the war on the poor that began with Tony Williams and Ed Fendi, okay? But the Fair Budget Coalition and Eric and, and many other people fought back and they restored $50 million. But if it's not freezing, as of April 1st, they can close the shelf, okay? And up until now, D.C. government has, on its good graces, sheltered the homeless year-round. But those good graces are running out. And so that's why we're here to fight this fight. This is the first of several meetings, and, and, and hopefully when we come out of here, we're, we're, we're going to begin to take some action on the issue. So we're starting by informing you about the crisis, because, let me put it like this, uh, several, uh, this past Thursday, about two dozen people met with the mayor, and, and uh, we, we talked to him about the, the budget cut to homeless services, and, and also about the TANF cuts, temporary assistance for needy families. You know, when I told you about, about them getting 320 a month, and being cut down to 240 a month, we told him about those cuts and said what harm it's going to do, and, and we, we gave him ideas on how on where to find money to, to reverse those cuts, and it was the longest no that I ever heard. We, we met with him for an hour, and he basically told us, no, I don't have the money, I'm not going to take money from this to put into homeless services. Man, we need your vote. We want to help you do whatever you can or whatever like that. Why we got to go and see them? No, I've, I've gone and asked Katania a question when I had one. And um, Tommy Wells. I, I know them because I've been down to 1350 Pennsylvania. You know, and I'm not just going to say they got to come to me. I've seen Tommy Wells come down to, uh, to Miriam's Kitchen on a Tuesday morning. The one thing that I've heard that's been understated more so than anything else is the importance of not only registering, but voting. Half of the people that came down here and filled out those registration forms might not even vote, even after they get registered. If, it, if if, if, if Eric had sent those invitations to anyone on the city council and gave them a Georgetown address, they'd be busting the doors down. Why? <laughs> not because they got money, not because they're white. They vote. They can vote you in of it, they can vote your ass out. It's about your vote, man. Let them find out everybody down here is a registered voter. Yeah. 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 My point was, don't make sure like these people going down and coming down here. That's what we need. We need more of that. We need to see people in the streets and identify with them so we can vote on them. This right here is good, though, because they're coming to us. Everybody down here ready to vote today and make sure they do vote. They got to be saved. They got to know who they are. That's Kyle right there, bro. That's Kyle. We have a strong enough presence in the city that we can raise money for ourselves and yeah, for the things that we need for homeless services. We can have entertainers come in, give concerts, we can clean the streets and raise money for ourselves. I think we need to start looking at those things because if we come to the table with our own dollars and then ask the government, we have to have solutions to go to the council with to raise money. And I think that's a very important attitude for us to have to enable to achieve our goals in homeless services. Getting a job isn't the, the hardest thing. Because you can get a job, the problem is getting to it. Oh, yes. I can get hired today, right. working for U.S. Ferg in Virginia. That's right. But the problem is not that I, I can't have the job, I can't get to it. I can't afford Metro. $20. I can't afford to, to hop on the, on the bus every day for a buck sixty every time I hop on the bus. So it's more than just finding employment. It's more about finding transportation and things to sustain this job that I may get. We also got to fight against the transition housing and shelter homes that are not doing what they're supposed to be doing, but for somehow they keep getting the money to provide services that they're not providing. 
you can get out there and get a petition started right here in CCMB. Among them women that you sleep with every night and that you know, you can get them to sign that petition to get you on the ballot. That be your power. You can sit at the table with them same people you say they're helping you and question them about the issues that are concerning you. See, and the other thing is, hold on, nothing else is to go. Look, we got to learn how to advocate for ourselves. You got to be able to find that program or that grant that fits your criteria. But if you don't know about it, that's what we're here for, to try to inform you about those programs and them grants that fit you, that fit a young lady like yourself, that's going to help you move from, the, from out of this place right here. Yeah. Yeah. Don't look for results today, because it doesn't happen. How long did it take us to get results? Right. Years. We've been working for four years actively, non-paid, volunteer, for People for Fairness Coalition. So that's strong advocacy, but it changes lives. Eric been doing this stuff for a long time, at least six years, I know for sure. 15,000 members, 15, I, I can't get two members on Facebook. He got 15,000 because his voice is really strong. He touched and he feel people. But at the end of the day, that's what it's about. So it ain't about really that $7 million we missing. It's about our voice. That $7 million will come if our voice is strong. So